In today's video, I'll show you how I cycled the DD900 over 11 week period to avoid this and this, so stay tuned. It's time to prepare your tank for cycling. So once you've got your rockscape sorted, you've filled up the tank, I would leave the skimmer off as it does not help with cycling the tank. Open the gate valve and a roller filter as you want all the nutrients you add to break down and assist with the cycle and development of the tank for now. And last but not least, leave all lighting switched off as at this stage the only thing that it will help is the build up of nuisance algae. Once the tank has settled down, it's time to add your first livestock and that is bacteria. I'm using Dr. Tim's as I've used this before. This is live bacteria, so you need to add a source of ammonia to start the cycle and also to keep feeding it. If you don't add anything, then the bacteria will die off. Now you can do this in one or two ways. You can either use fish or as I'm going to, as I've done, I throw a prawn into the sump and that kicks off the cycle because as the prawn breaks down, it starts to release ammonia. Over the next few days, you should see the prawn disintegrate. And as it does, I would then start testing for ammonia. Once you see a spike on ammonia, you should then see nitrate, and then it should go to nitrate. But that's not always the case. It can skip straight from ammonia to nitrate. I, however, did not test for ammonia as I'm going for an 11-week cycle. In week three, I actually tested, and the nitrate was 50. So as far as I was concerned, the cycle was well on its way, and I removed the prawn. Should both ammonia and nitrite be zero and you have a nitrate reading, then the tank is ready to add fish. However, if you choose not to and do nothing else, then the bacteria will starve and the cycle will stall. To stop this, you ghost feed by adding a small pinch of food each day, say enough for a couple of fish, and this will keep the bacteria growing. During the past seven days, I've started a culture of copepods, and today I have just set up a culture of brine shrimp. First time I've done copepods like this before in a bigger container. And you can might be able just to see, not very well, a few uh, swimming around, although very early days, and quite a big container for only about 100 milliliters worth of copepods. And in the brine shrimp, this is in there, started today. All I did was cut a two litre bottle, base is there, and then that's the top. Salt water, got some brine shrimp eggs, and just put a little lid on it to stop evaporation. It's about two or three days from to hatch. And then I've just got an old light LED over the top of it, and that'll be sufficient. Pump wise, the Heim 400, a dual feed on there. Obviously, one goes to the brine shrimp and one goes to the copepods. Now, if you do not want to culture yourself, then most LFS sell a variety of life foods. Lastly, the whole point of this is to add life to a sterile tank, a great food source for new fish, and also help to outcompete algae. The tank would have been running now for about four weeks. So in week five, you want to switch the skimmer on. And also, if you have a roller filter, start filtering. This will help to start collecting the crud and leftover food from ghost feeding as you start to bring down nitrates. We're now into week seven and you should be still testing and also uh, ghost feeding and weekly adding of copepods. But it's now turn time to ramp up the lights with four weeks to, to go. Um, I've started with the XR15s and increased it by half an hour per day to get up to eight hours with the T5s at 15 minutes um, and increasing that up to three hours maximum for when the fish go in. You're now in the home stretch and consistency is key for the next three weeks. Keep testing that water. My nitrates come down to 15 from uh, 50. That's good enough for fish. Keep feeding the live food every week and also continue to ramp up your lighting for both intensity and time required. At this stage, I switch to uh, frozen mysis from flake. I just find that there's less nutrients in frozen and also provides more particles for when the fish are in there and they can feed for 
longer, not fighting over so much food. And then last but not least, I put in some more beneficial bacteria and used Fritz 9 on this occasion. The last phase for me lasted three weeks, but you could put in the fish now. If your ammonia is zero, nitrite is zero, nitrates are below 20, and your phosphate is below 0.1. However, if your nitrates are a little bit higher and phosphates too, then you can always complete a water change. But I decided to stick it out until week 11. So today I added five pink long fin amphias. And the reason why they are beautiful fish, they're already eating frozen. I am at home most of the time at the moment, so I can feed them between four to six times a day, so little and often. And they're also one of the more hardier amphias. However, it's not without risk, as I usually add fish like clowns or chromis or hardier fish so we will see how it goes but first impressions that they are absolutely beautiful and an update on the next video after about three weeks of adding fish i had an outbreak of diatomes that lasted about 10 days before burning out and this is part of the course a month later i had a fairly bad outbreak of algae but not green hair algae this is due to overfeeding as i keep the amphias well fed as i've not installed additional filtration and have not been undertaking regular water changes i did however manage to get it under control within about three weeks so that's my update for now i hope you enjoyed the video if you did then please like or maybe subscribe to future videos thanks for watching